Welcome to the Cynthia Nyamai Show. Now, I've been reading a book, The Kenya's Tax Czar, and I had to talk to the author of the book. That's Mr. Michael Waweru. We know him from the slogan, Kulipa Ushuru na Kujitegemea, or rather, Kulipa Ushuru ni Kujitegemea. And we know him because for the first time after a long spree of borrowing money, the KRA was able to surpass its target. And we were able to meet 95% of our expenditure without borrowing from IMF and other Western Buddhists. But what makes this book interesting is because it's raw. And you know, I love raw stories. This book is raw, talking about a lot of public figures that we know, some in good light, some in an interesting light. Let's find out more from the author. Thank you very much, Mr. Michael Waweru, for joining us today. It's a great honor. As I was reading your book and thinking about the interview, I was wondering, okay, what am I going to call him? I was so used to calling him DGTG, but it's a pleasure having you. Tell us why you decided to write this book. Thank you very much for inviting me mm. for this interview. Mm. Well, I thought um, I should put my story yes. uh, for posterity, for mm. people to, to read and understand. Yes. I consider I was occupying a very central position mm -hmm. and uh, I, I thought letting people know yes. what we did, mm. why we did it, yes. would be a good idea. Yes. And I hope they will enjoy yes. and learn something from it. I, I certainly enjoyed it, and that's why I said I have to ask you about mm. it yes. and have this interview. And the title of the book is Kenya's Tax Czar. And I was wondering, is it that um, for your career, one of the things that really stood out for you was your time at Kari? Well, the, the title Kenya's Tax Czar mm. is uh, borrowed from... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, and a nation newspaper yes. article yes. many years ago yeah. when they actually mm -hmm. called me Tagza after yeah. we had met our target mm -hmm. and uh, so we thought why not why not why, why not use it anyway yes. as a such because mm -hmm. they branded us that yes. and I think it's a good title yes yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and take us through the process of, of writing a book how many years um, did it take to write this book or maybe even months um, and you've mentioned also a lot of people in your book who are public figures. Mm. Is there also a process of having to talk to all of them and let them know you will be in a book? What is that process like? First of all, in terms of how long it took, mm -hmm. we started writing this book in 2019. Yes. So it's taken about uh, two years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's, there's quite a bit of interviewing mm -hmm. of people, and therefore I had assistance yes. from people. Uh, for example, there's a lady called Wajiro Aidaka yes. who did a lot of interviewing, including even interviewing my mother yes. and getting to hear stories from my mother mm -hmm. that I didn't even know myself. Yeah. Uh, then the, the, the other figures, no, I, I did not ask them mm. because I, it's me talking, yes. my relationship with them. Mm. So it's from my point of view. Yes. Uh, they may have a different, they may interpret our, our interaction differently, mm. yeah. but I'm purely looking at these things from my point of view. Mm -hmm. Yes. Reading about your childhood and even up to high school, going yes. to Machakos Boys and so on, yes. what stories stood out for you that you really wanted to share about your childhood? I, I wanted, first of all, for anybody reading this book to mm -hmm. see where we've come from yes. as, as a person mm -hmm. from uh, those days, years ago, when you were squatters in uh, Nakuru, yeah. mm -hmm. and see that you can actually make out, uh, out of something out of yourself despite mm -hmm. your background. Mm -hmm. One of the things I found interesting was when you were talking about your time in Machakos, yes. and you realized that you had an accent. Mm -hmm. I liked the sense of humor in, in, in that story. Yes. Maybe for those who haven't read the book, just yes. tell us a little bit about that. Well, you see, I was coming from Kiroa. Yeah. Uh, we were most of us were Kikuyus, yeah. so we spoke the same language, mm -hmm. and we had, I believe, we we had a very good teacher yeah. who taught us very good English, mm -hmm. but he never bothered about uh, the accent. Yeah. So when I went to Machakos, and I was telling these people that I was a Masa. In fact, when I said my name is Waweru, mm -hmm. we said there there was a Masa here. Yeah. There was a, another guy called Waweru who was a Masa. Mm -hmm. So I said I'm Masa. Yeah. Then mm. uh, he started, then he said, no, no, you are, I think you are Kikuyu. Mm. Uh, th then he tried to ask me to speak, to yeah. say, the lorry ran along. The lorry. <laughs> of course, I, I was mixing all these things. And, uh, 
and the truth came out. Yeah, yes. the truth came out. That's when I realized, yeah, yeah they, they have a very strong EQ accent. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And so you took us even through, um, in the book, you've taken us through your career, how your career um, started, didn't start at, at, at KRE. But um, a large chunk of the book talks about KRE. Yes. Um, tell us about how you got the appointment, which you have been very open about in the book. That uh, Kenya Revenue yes, Authority. Yes. Well, uh, first of all, um, um, I I was involved mm-hmm. in the, and I've talked about it here yeah. in the presidential campaign mm-hmm. of uh, two thousand and two. Yes. Uh, I had just left Ernst and Young. Yes. December September two thousand and two. I left Ernst and Young, mm-hmm. and I was thinking of going back to university. Yes. I wanted to go back and do a master's degree, do a PhD, mm. and probably lecture. Yes. Then I met a gentleman called Solomon Karanja, mm. who was the registrar of Nairobi University when I was there. And he recruited me to the presidential campaign of President Mwai Kibaki. Yes. And I went there and worked. Then after that, mm. after the, the elections were won, now I'm thinking of going back to university. Yes. Uh, and uh, now I'm thinking of going to do an IT degree. Mm. And then uh, Professor Majo, he calls me, tells me, how can you, you yeah. have just won the election, how, mm. who do you think is going to deliver yeah. on the manifesto you have been so, you have so embly sold? Yeah. Because so, a lot of people, when they are working on campaigns, yes. uh, it's because they are hoping to get a job, in a high-profile job in, in the government. I wasn't thinking. That's why I was surprised when he mm. said you were looking now to go back. To yes, I wasn't thinking like that yeah. myself. Yeah. I was thinking about uh, winning the election, then going back to mm. university. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and why Mwai Kibaki? Why did you decide to campaign for him? Okay, first of all, at the time, and I knew Mwai Kibaki for many years. Yes. Uh, from the, my days, I served in, um, in the office of Pano Bell House Mwangi mm-hmm. between 1982 and 1984, mm-hmm. three years, mm-hmm. and uh, he was one of my clients, mm-hmm. and I interacted with him. Yes. But I kind of thought he was a... Yeah, so you believed in him and yes. his vision. Yes. Yes. Mm. And with that kind of friendship that you have, I found it interesting in the book you said that uh, during the time that you served, uh, and I'll let you tell that story, I think it would be more interesting coming from you, that he never used to call uh, and ask you, you know, what is going on or even try and interrupt or use his influence. But tell us about that phone that was seated in the office and you were expecting that one day he should call. Well, when I joined um, the authority, mm. I took off from uh, John, the late John Munge. Yes. And uh, one of the things he had, uh, okay, I worked, I worked in there at uh, about uh, eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we went, briefly we went to talk to the, to the employees. Yes. Then we came back. Mm. And obviously because of the circumstances, mm. He was quite uncomfortable. So he told me, the one thing I must make sure you understand is this phone, if it ever rings, yes. even if you are in the loo, mm. you must come and pick it. <laughs> yes. Because that's where, that, that will probably be the yes. president calling you. Yes. Yes. So me, I never touched that phone. Yeah. And for him, it was president, former president Moy. Moy, Moy, Moy yes. yes. I never touched that phone. Mm. Never. Waiting. I waited for it to, <laughs> call, to ring. It never rang. Yes. Then one day, uh-huh. a colleague of mine, Eddie yes. Jeroge, came yes. visiting and I told him the story. Mm. He asked me, have you ever do you know, does it work? <laughs> and that's when I picked it. I yeah. said it wasn't working. It was dead. <laughs> it was dead. So you now you understood why the president, then President Kibaki, wasn't calling. Yes. But he never interfered. What what um, relationship, work relationship, did you have with the former president? I think uh, President Kebaki appointed people he had mm. confidence in yes. and he, then he let them do their work without mm. interfering at mm. all. He never interfered at all with what I was doing. Yes. I, and I believe that's the right thing. Mm. You, give, you get good people, mm. you let them run the organization. Yes. If they get into trouble, mm. it's up to them. Yes. If, they, if they do well, yes. well and good. When, when I talk about uh, phone calls, there are a few... Um, phone calls that I, I was reading about, yes. and I can imagine yes. uh, you probably got many more phone calls. Mm. Uh, one of the phone calls uh, and meetings, like for example, was, uh, and let me just read, uh, we had sent out a notice requiring that consolidated cargo bear the names of individual importers, and then traders using the airport resisted the move and sent a delegation to the office of Uhuru Kenyatta, who then was the deputy yes. um, prime minister and also yes. the minister for finance. Yes. Uhuru called me and said, can you come to my office? 
I want to sort out this matter. Yes. About, which, mm. of course, you understood when he was calling you. Yes. What, that maybe people had um, talked to him. And yes. He wanted to probably influence. Yes. Um, and then you said, uh, DPM, I'm sorry, I will not come. We want to take a short break. When we come back, mm. I want to find out okay. where did you get the guts? Um, to say that and then find out after that phone call what happened. That and more coming up. Welcome back to the Cynthia Nyamai show. Before we took a break, I just read out a snippet of Mr. Waweru's book. And as I was asking you before, where did you get the guts? Um, to respond to then the Deputy Prime Minister, Uru Kinata, who is now our president, um, and say, no, I'm not coming to your office. This is a powerful man from the right family and everything um, else, but you said, no, you stood your ground. First of all, um, you put yourself in a politician's shoes. Yes. People have come. Mm -hmm. They want favors from him. Yes. And uh, he, you know he doesn't, he doesn't want to break the law. Mm -hmm. He does not want to do anything that is yes, illegal. Yes. So if you go and he tells you do this and you do it, he yeah. are putting himself and yourself in that trouble. Yes. So the best thing is to say mm -hmm. you will not do it yes. because it is against the law. Yeah. So I did. I told him uh, I will not come yes. because we, I do not want us to resolve tax matters in your office. Mm -hmm. Yes. But even as you were writing this yeah. book, and here you were speaking about our president. Yes. Um, did you, were you afraid that maybe one might feel attacked and some of the other people also that you have written about and maybe they might feel like um, they didn't like how you brought them out uh, in this book? Was that that kind of pressure? No, okay. it, 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 I didn't think about it. Yeah. I, I think you also find that there, there are stupid things I did that I've written about yes, here yes. myself. <laughs> I mean, we are all human. It's a very raw book. Yeah, yeah, I like it. It's yeah. very raw. Mm -hmm. But I also like, and I think for me, I was learning a lesson. I, I, I like how even after you narrate this story, there's a part you said, Uhuru is a smart man, and he immediately saw the wisdom in my response. I saw the wisdom in mm -hmm. how you wrote this mm -hmm. uh, this book. Mm -hmm. That it's not really, um, you know, talking about uh, people, but sharing real experiences, real life experiences yes. for people to understand how. Uh, even for politicians, they go through so much pressure, pressure. people always asking them for, for favors. For favors. Um, if, even as uh, I remember when we first had the announcement about your appointment, mm. um, a lot of people, there were interviews and discussions um, about Kiari. Mm. Uh, it was almost at its knees. We had never seen um, Kiari before you uh, able to meet its targets mm. and surpass yes. um, its targets. So yes. when you eventually got that job, mm. Mm. And with all watching all these interviews and what people were saying about Kiare, mm. what was going through your head? Well, first of all, joining the authority, I, I, I thought it was, it was a challenge. Yes. I had, um, remember, I was appointed immediately after Kebaki became president yes. and he was unwell. Yes. And before that, I had seen President Moy mm. talking to, to, saying he was going to negotiate with IMF and World Bank. Yes. And I, I, I personally, I, even even though I wasn't in government at that time, mm -hmm. didn't think that the president should go and beg. Yes. Because the, the moment he does that, it makes the whole country beggar. Yes. And certainly, I felt that it was my responsibility mm -hmm. as Commissioner General yes. to protect President Kebaki mm -hmm. from having to go and beg, yes. particularly in view of that, the fact that he had been unwell yes. after the accident. Yes. So it's, the, my, my personal goal mm -hmm. was to make sure that we ex exceed the target yes. and uh, remove that pressure from the, yes. the government. Yes. And eventually it did happen. It did, because yeah. I remember mm. um, the finance minister then, mm. uh, Honorable Kimunya, for mm. the first time reading out a budget that was self-sustainable. We didn't have to borrow yes. um, from other countries to yes. keep our economy going. How did it feel then? The, the first minister who actually read a budget without factoring in donor mm. support was Mirai. Yes. who was Kebaki's okay. first Minister of Finance, yes. I, I felt really nice. Yeah. The fact that we were able to raise money mm. and meet our obligations yes. without having to factor in donor support. Mm. Of course, uh, the, the when you succeed, mm. people want to be involved in your success. So yes. we were successful. Mm. So donors would come. And that's a good, that's a good thing to be able to do. Yes. When they come in because you are successful, yes. they are not coming to a basket case. Mm. And you can therefore pick and choose yes. who you want to relate to. Yes. That's what that's really what I thought yeah. we should be able to do as yeah. a country. Yeah. What is the 
one thing you would say you were most proud of when you worked at um, KRE? I think, I think the, the, the most gratifying thing, really, that the one thing that I really like talking about is being able, over the nine years I was there, mm -hmm. exceeding the target yes. at least five times in yes. those nine years. Yeah, yeah. It was a major, major success. Yeah. Major, major, um, major, these are major milestones. Mm -hmm. five, five out of nine years. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you could tell us, what does it mean when the country is able to meet um, its target. How are we better governed uh, when a country is able or care is able to meet its targets and yes. revenues? First of all, if you, you look at the, 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 the theatre, mm -hmm. the world theatre, international theatre, yes. every country is trying to raise its own revenue. Mm. Every country is trying to develop. Yes. Each country, whether they are the, the ones we refer to as donors, mm -hmm. I don't think there is anybody somewhere in the Netherlands who is saying, yes. Let's pay our taxes so that the poor Kenyan can uh, get the money. Mm -hmm. So when you are able to pay your way through the international community, yes. you are able to stand there and say we are independent. Yes. If you are going to be begging around, so you go, for example, I give the example, you go to the United Nations, mm -hmm. and in the plenary there you are talking loudly about uh, all these big countries doing this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And then after the plenary, you are going to private rooms and telling these people, hey, you know, we need your assistance. Yes. I mean, you, you, you can't be serious. Mm -hmm. You should be able to speak the same language. You should be able to stand your ground and say, yes. this is the way we are going to, yeah. this, this is where Kenya stands, this is Kenya's position. Mm -hmm. And the only way you'll be respected mm -hmm. is if you are able to, to pay your way through yes. and you, you, are, you are not going for... I hear there are times when we might even have... Uh, have we might have sought for finance of, uh, to mm -hmm. pay our salaries. Yes. How can you not yeah. pay your salaries? Yeah, mm. yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, I'm wondering what motivates you because even when you were working for his campaign, you were not looking for, for a job. And yes. after uh, your term ended, you were willing... Uh, to live and mm. stick in a powerful uh, job with lots of opportunities. What then motivates you? What made you even take up that job? And what made you motivates you in your daily life? I think for, 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 for Kenya Revenue Authority, the real, the real motivating thing is being able to exceed your target, mm -hmm. being able to enable the government to meet the, the development objectives. Mm -hmm. You have, you, If you have personal pride, then you would like to see that happen, yes. that you are collecting enough money mm -hmm. for the government. Now, I, I personally, um, the riches are not that important. Yes. Of course, we want to live well, you want to be able to, but they're, they're not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. No, it's mm -hmm. being able to see that you are b making a difference in other, in other people's lives. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In your book, there are a lot of um, successes to, to mm -hmm. celebrate. Mm -hmm. What are some of the mistakes that you have made in your life and, and learned from? There, there are many mistakes mm -hmm. I have made uh, in my life. I mean, one of the things I talk about here is that um, that uh, experience I had in, in Alliance High School, yes. when I I went there mm -hmm. under the impression that I needed to do a certain combination, yes. and uh, even without thinking, I told of the headmaster, yeah. the teacher, and <laughs> then walked out of that place, yeah. uh, went to Machakos. It worked out well, yes. uh, and, and perhaps that's how fate uh, mm -hmm. moves you. Yes. Because perhaps fate, it was fated that I would never be a lawyer, mm. I would be an accountant. Yes. Um, so those are some, some of the, the other things that um, other mistakes you make, yeah. uh, and and you learn. Mm. And but my my, my own uh, attitude is that when you get into when you make a mistake, yes. you make the best of it. Yes. So I generally accept my mistakes mm -hmm. and uh, make the best out of uh, the mistakes. I do not. I don't uh, linger, I don't uh, brood over the, these things, yeah. I move on. Yeah. So mm. we accept our mistakes, we accept the challenges in life. Because the interesting thing you said, like in Strathmore, mm. uh, you are scoring A's and, and, and B's, mm. but in accounting, which my is own, field, my my own field. Yeah, I was getting C. And people who you are training are getting A's. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> who you are cheating. Yes, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, are, you accept those things. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. I, I think I like your open. Mm. Uh, to life. Mm. Yes. I mean, if you if I started uh, saying I was getting A's or I was getting C's mm. in any, mm. uh, I mean, 
and sometimes you feel like I'm a whole former KRA commissioner general. How can I get a CEO look like I'm not doing so well in some areas of my life? That has never been an issue. Mm. I have never carried any position with me yes. wherever I have been. Yeah. I, when I am with people, I work with them at mm. the same level. Yes. Um, getting a C in uh, accounting yeah. was curious, as I've said here, yeah. uh, but I did not bother about it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. in any case, I passed. Mm. Mm. Reading about the different people that you have mentioned in yes. your book, yes. I realized there's a whole crop of, of, of leaders. Um, of integrity and, and men that, uh, and women that we really celebrate. Looking at the generation that is coming up, are we going to have leaders um, like that? And what are you doing to also bring up leaders like that, or even better? First of all, I think um, these things are cyclical. Mm -hmm. So we've went through Quebec's time. Before that, we had, Uhuru's, we, we had uh, Moi's time. Yes. And, and leaders will come and go, but the nation continues. Yeah. In terms of developing leaders, leaders, mm -hmm. I I personally have no role in developing leaders. But if I am asked a question, yes. if I am consulted, I always give a prop, what I think is appropriate advice. Mm -hmm. I think we will have uh, corrupt leaders, leaders. Mm -hmm. We will have honest leaders, and uh, it will continue like that. If you read the history of the world, mm -hmm. it was always like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you have honest people who lead their people, and they know what they want, want to achieve for their people. Mm -hmm and the others who wanted to achieve for themselves. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, um, when you sit back and look at what you have achieved as an individual, yes. it's really just vanity. Yeah. Yes, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. As we wind up the show, what would you want people to really get out of this book? I would like uh, people to look at this book and uh, maybe conclude that we did our best, mm -hmm. we give it our very best at Kenya Revenue Authority and whatever we have tried to do. And I, I believe we also achieved uh, something for the country. Yes. That's really what I would like people to take away from this book. Yes. And your last word of advice? Last word of advice, mm -hmm. do your best in whatever you are doing. Wow. I like that. Mm. Do your best in whatever you are doing. Mm. Leaders come and go, mm. but do your best mm. in whatever you are doing, because this nation will always still stand. Yeah. See you next time.